welcome again. This is Stu from Outdoor Hydro, and today we're going to be taking a look at a product that I found at the uh, San Francisco Indoor Gardening Expo, hosted by Maximum Yield. And this is a uh, water water safe hydroponic water test. Now this is something that is really useful. Um, this is something I was looking for when I first got into hydroponics, and I couldn't find it, um, which is why I use reverse osmosis water right now. But for those of you who are still using tap, you know a lot of uh, municipalities have acceptable tap water for hydroponic use. Mine doesn't, um, but we're going to go ahead and test it and get some more data on it. The reason I, I didn't like mine originally was because the PPM was too high and that for me is enough to just throw it off. But what this test does, and it only costs um, $30 if I recall, is it tests for the bacteria, pesticides, chlorine, the hardness of your water, the pH, and its iron content. So uh, these are all really great things to know and for $30 it's a steal. So let's go ahead and, and open this thing up and take a look at what my water quality looks like and see how accurate this thing is. Alright, so when you open this thing up, it's got an instruction manual and then it's got four other pieces. It's got um, a, ba a bacteria test vial, a pesticide test packet, uh, one pH hardness and chlorine test packet, and one iron test packet. And then it has instructions for how to operate each of the four, so we're going to go through them one by one. Alright, so test number one is our bacteria test, and this one's pretty simple, but it is going to take about two days for us to actually get any results. So pretty much it's real simple. All you're, we're going to do is we're going to unscrew this cap on the top here. Um, inside it's got some powder, which I guess is what actually performs the test. It's going to change colors in the presence of bacteria. So all we're going to do is we're going to take off the little plastic wrapper here. We're going to unscrew the top. And then we're going to fill up the water to, there's, um, you probably can't see them, but there's some lines here. And the very top line is 5 milliliters. So we're going to go ahead and fill this up to 5 milliliters with uh, some water from our tap. Now you don't want to use hot water or anything like that. You just want to use some cold water. Um, I'm going to use a little pipette here so I don't spill. And then what we're going to do after it's filled up is we're going to close the cap on this. And we're going to leave it, um, it says somewhere where the temperature is between 70 and 90 degrees. So I'm probably going to go ahead and leave this either outside or on my windowsill. And then we're supposed to come back to check the results in about 48 hours. And we'll see whether the test is positive, which means it's going to turn purple. Or, uh, I'm sorry, it's going to turn yellow if it's positive, And then it's going to turn purple if it's negative. Alrighty, well here we are two days later. Uh, taking a look at our bacteria test sample vial. And after two days, survey says it is purple. That means that it is negative for any type of particularly harmful bacteria. Um, had it been yellow, that would have meant it was positive and our water was contaminated with bad bacteria. But it's purple, so that's the good news. So it looks like everything's good with that. Awesome. Okay, so the next test is the pesticide test. And what this is going to do is it's going to test our tap water for the two most common um, pesticides that one would expect to find in their water and that is atrazine and simazine and it tests for levels of um, anything above 3 ppb or 4 ppb uh, respectively. So what happens here is basically we have a vial which we're going to fill with water from the little pipette that comes with the, uh, the test itself and then we're going to put this little test strip in there and we'll let it sit for about 10 minutes and it's going to let us know if we have toxic levels of either of those pesticides in our water. So here we go. We just want to give it one full squeeze. It fills up the measured amount, pre-measured amount right there in the pipette. I'm going to go ahead and squeeze it again back out into here. Now this is only a few drops of water but that's what the test calls for. So then we're going to go ahead and put in our little strip. Wait for about 10 minutes. Swirl around a little bit and then we'll see what our results are. Okay, so it's been 10 minutes. We're gonna take a look at our pesticide strip here. You wanna take it with the arrows pointing to the left as shown in the diagram, and pretty much it's like a pregnancy test. Uh, it's got two little lines, and depending on which one is brighter or darker, it'll tell you whether you're positive or negative. So um, looks like my mine here, the first little line is significantly darker than the second line. So that means that my water tests negative for the pesticides atrazine and simazine, uh, which is good news. Um, if the second line had been darker or the lines had been roughly equal, then that would have meant that it tested positive. 
So it looks like my water is relatively pesticide free, at least from these two particular common ones. And that's, a, that's good to know. You definitely don't want to be using any kind of water that has pesticides in it for obvious reasons. Okay, the third test is going to be our iron test. Now this one's a little bit quicker. Pretty much what we're going to do is we're going to take this little test strip out of its packet right here. Then we're going to go ahead and place it into the water sample. We're going to swish it around in there for about, eh, we're going to leave it in there for about five seconds. And then we're going to take it out and wait about two minutes. And then at the end of two minutes, we'll be able to look at this card here and compare the color of the test strip to the card to figure out what the PPM level of the iron is in our water sample. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to open it up, tear it open, and it looks kind of similar to a Band-Aid. Pull out the test strip carefully. Swish it around. And let it sit for five seconds. One one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, four one thousand, five one thousand, six one thousand. Okay, there we go. And then we're going to take it out and we are going to let it sit for about two minutes and see what that color is. We'll be back in two minutes. Well, there it is, folks. It's been two minutes, uh, just as the direction stated. And I'm comparing this up to my little chart up here. And it would appear as though, according to this test, I have zero ppm of iron in my water. Uh, no way for me to really tell independently whether that's true or not, but I'll have to trust the strip. So I guess there's no iron in this water, which I guess is always a good sign. Um, looks like it measures all the way up to 5 ppm. I couldn't tell you at what level it gets dangerous. Again, I use the reverse osmosis water, so I like everything to be at a zero. But it is nice to hear that at least I don't have a bunch of iron in my water. Let's move on to the fourth and final test. Okay, so our final test here, the last of the four, is going to test for three different things. It's going to test for the pH, the hardness of the water, and also the uh, chlorine. Now this is the fastest of the four tests. Pretty much all we're going to do is we're going to take this little test strip out of its case here and we're going to just dunk it in the water real quickly and then immediately remove it and hold it level for 15 seconds and after the end of 15 seconds it should give us a reading on all three of those metrics which we will then compare on our chart here so here we go we're going to dunk it in and immediately move it out now we're going to hold it level for about 15 seconds And okay, 15 seconds has elapsed. Let's take a look right here. So, it says the pH on this appears to be um, about, it's looking like somewhere in between 7.5 and 8.5. I'd call this closer to 7.5 actually. Uh, that's pretty consistent with what my my pH meter would, uh, would tell me when I put it in it's normally somewhere between 7 and 7.4 so um, here it's saying about 7.5 and that's you know it's accurate enough um, I know the water is a little closer to 7 than it is to 7.5 um, but it's close enough for uh, just getting an at a glance view of what your water quality is and the second one here is going to be the hardness which is the little one in the middle and the hardness uh, I would put that closer to the 250 one here. So it looks like 250 ppm of uh, water hardness. That sounds about right because my water is pretty hard here. And when I uh, when I put the TDS meter into a water sample here, the the ppm could be anywhere from uh, at least 250 to 350, uh, depending on the day. Um, so that seems pretty accurate right there. Um, let's see here the total chlorine. It shows, uh, this one looks pretty colorless. I'm going to put this one closer to the zero. I'm sure there's some amount of chlorine in there, as most water tends to have a little bit. But it looks like that's not too much of a problem with my water, as it's, uh, it's coming up uh, closer to the zero ppm than it is to the two ppm. So that's good news. 
So there you have it. For um, about $30, if I recall correctly, uh, this kit can, can help you figure out whether it's okay to use your tap water or whether you should be using reverse osmosis water or some other type of filtered water. Um, and if you've got you know pesticides, hard water, uh, chlorine, those kind of things, you want to get rid of it. Now the chlorine you can deal with by just letting it sit out in the open air overnight and the chlorine uh, will actually evaporate. So that's the least of your troubles. Now the pH is also not really too big a deal because that can be adjusted using pH up and pH down agents. Um, the hardness, the pesticides, and the metals in the water though, those are just something that has to be filtered out with a quality filter. Uh, I played around with it for a while and I ended up getting a reverse osmosis filter. Um, it, it'll get it down to 0 to 1 ppm and that's down from again, you know, 300 plus ppm uh, how it comes out of the tap. So all in all, I'd say this product is absolutely worth it. Um, I would definitely be interested in this if I didn't have a reverse osmosis filter. Uh, I'd probably like to get another one of these just to test the water uh, after I've run it through the reverse osmosis filter just to make sure everything's at a clean zero. And right now I've only got one of these kits though, so I'll have to order another one and, and get that done sometime. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, go ahead and leave any questions or comments you have down in the comment section. And I'll also shoot a link in the description to the company that makes this in case you want to order one yourself. Also, go ahead and check the full article and review on OutdoorHider.com, and everyone enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.